I don't want to know a life without an unknown in the mountains. To get out there and go find those things, that's what keeps me alive. That's what keeps that spark going. Water is a defining feature of this planet. In its liquid state, it covers 70% of the Earth's surface, and its solid state is responsible for shaping much of what remains. When we reflect on these processes, we often think in geologic terms, thousands, if not millions of years. Rivers snaking from one bend to the other, glaciers carving canyons from mountains. Today in the continental United States, much of the glacial formation of the Rocky Mountains is complete. But the ice is still here. The valley through which the South Fork of the Shoshone River flows in northwestern Wyoming has one of the highest concentrations of ice falls in North America. For a few months every year, with its unique climate and topography, Water and ice conspire to reshape this canyon into a new world. In as little as a few days, an area previously thought to be known will transform into an alien landscape. Loose, overhanging cliffs solidify with the cold and become draped in blankets of ice. The melting snow above continually adds to the formations, changing their shape and character a little every day. There's only one way to access these natural wonders. And for those who seek such adventure, they'll find their fill here. The South Fork Canyon in Wyoming is this incredible valley, 36 miles outside of Cody. A dirt road leads you to a dead end. And from that point, no matter which way you walk, you're walking into wilderness. In fact, you're walking into one of the most remote places in the continental U.S. It gives you this sense of rawness and wildness that is really hard to find in the United States right now. That wilderness has led a string of ice explorers to develop the area into a world-class climbing destination. In the 1980s, Kurt Cousins, along with his brother Todd and Monty Madsen, began establishing the first ice climbs in the canyon. Todd became particularly drawn to the South Fork and through the mid-1990s, pioneered many of the largest and most popular routes to this day. Todd's first ascents were followed with the arrival of Aaron Mulkey in the late 1990s. With many of the obvious lines having already been established, Aaron has had to push the exploration for new ice even further. Ice starts to form in October and runs into March or April. Ice comes and goes throughout that time. As the Earth rotates and the sun is hitting different spots at different times, and so there'll be ice climbs that don't form until maybe March. There'll be ice climbs that form in October, November, but then melt in January. Most of these ice climbs, the only way to get to that particular spot is to ice climb because the ice is actually what allows the access into these cliffs and into these canyons. But that's also like the really unique thing about ice climbing is that these things, you'll watch them for years and then they're finally there and you've got to go get them. For over 20 years, Aaron has been leading the exploration in the South Fork Canyon. In that span, he's managed to pack in a lifetime's worth of first ascents, with over 100 to his name. Not everybody's like me, where they want to choose the unknown. You gotta be willing to go one step further than the last person, and that takes some drive, and at the end of the day, I really think it probably takes maybe a, an addiction. You get to go and climb this thing that nobody's ever, ever seen, ever been on, and then to think that two months later, or sometimes days later, it's gone. 
it vanishes. It's no longer there. You're kind of lucky to be there. And the feeling that kind of comes with being the first, it's pretty awesome. Not only get to name it, but you know, it takes you back to hundreds of years ago and why did the explorers go and explore, right? Like, well, to see what nobody else has seen. That is that wildness that the South Fork provides. The Absorca range is, is quite large. Like the South Fork Valley is really just one part. Like I'm just picking away at this one small section on the map and I get them further and further into each little drainage and each little sliver. I mean, I'm 20 years and there's still stuff and there will be stuff for my entire lifetime. And so until those places are all explored and I feel like everything has been touched and everything has been seen, I'll keep having my addiction. And then the hardest part about that is that valley that I went to two years ago and there was no ice, who's to say there's not ice there today?